Hello, 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 and welcome to the Pottervision Podcast. The podcast where every two weeks, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and someone who's not me, Tom Lawrence, we read a chapter of the Harry Potter books, and uh, we talk about them. But after about half an hour or something else, this week we're on episode 153, chapter 18 of book 6, Birthday Surprises. Mm. And uh, have you got a surprise for my birthday coming up, Tom? Um, well, you're turning 30, aren't you? Yeah. In uh, yeah. When is it? Oh, in t- two weeks today. You old git. Yeah, old git, aren't I? <laughs> Martin must be keeps the... finding little grey hairs. Must be the third time you've turned 30 now, you old git. <laughs> Crinkly old bastard. Um... <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, I don't have any surprises for you. <laughs> well, uh, I don't want a big, I think some people are coming around for nibbles. My mum and dad are coming over to Germany. That'll be Bloody nice. Hell. They, they get to Germany a lot, don't they? Yeah, now they know they've got a grandchild coming, they've decided to become more. More active on the plane. Well, to visit. there's no point going to visit otherwise, is there? Ah, oh, it's only their only son. Well, they've got Alid now. Oh, yeah, they've got Alid now. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't son. abandoned us. Should we go visit our weird son in Germany? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I must clean my glasses. I apologise to people who are judging the dirty nature of my spectacles these are new I've only had these about a month did you notice you got jizz on them <laughs> well why would you say that why would you say that it's just a bit of smudge where, where'd you get because <laughs> either what what are these possibilities there either I've got a very good range <laughs> Or is he implied I'm giving somebody a blazer? I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's telling me here with that childish remark. There's a few moments where I was like, he's got smudges on his glasses, and I was like, okay, comedy brain, go. Could it be food? And then I was, I was like, not much of a shock factor there. The only thing that's left is jizz. So I, was like, <laughs> so I was like, should I say it? I might have dead it out. Um, yeah. well, I just t- I just touch them all the time. Like if I if I wipe my eye, I don't take my glasses off and do that. I'll just stick my finger up like that. Hmm. Where'd you get them? Yeah. How much were they? Well, they were from Specsavers in Newport. <laughs> mm-hmm. When uh, we cancelled those shows, I had a. Uh, a couple of days in Newport doing nothing. So I went and got my eyes tested. And then uh, they had the glasses delivered to Clandidno, but then it was too late. I'd already gone to Germany, so then I had to wait another two months before my mum and dad came to visit. And they brought me new spectacles! Way. <laughs> I'm a, I think it was three years since my previous test, and I've only got one eye slightly worse. Oh. That's good, isn't it? How are your eyes? I feel like you're quite sharp sighted. I've never had a, I've never had a uh, eye test in my life. Oh, so maybe your eyesight's not very good, and you've just How not noticed. How dare you? Oh yeah, but I've got jizz on me specs. That's all right. No, that's what I can see. I can see. <laughs> that's what I can see. Somebody got bad eyesight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just take your glasses off. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, you don't need them. You're a dirty bugger, aren't you? Oh, Ooh. thank you, Specsavers new birds. <laughs> dirty bugger, <laughs> Lucas. Um, mm. Are you not tempted to just uh, have, have your eyesight tested? I give myself a little eye test all the time. Look, open one eye, fine. Open the other eye, fine. Have yeah, you got to stare at a balloon and? Read, like, Star Wars text that gets smaller as you go down the screen. Stare at a balloon? 
Yeah, there's always a little hot air balloon. You look at a hot air balloon in the distance. And then they look at your eyes. Okay. I've never had one of these. Also, I went to the hospital uh, yesterday. Oh, just to have a look round, or were you poorly? I was a... Uh... <laughs> See anything in. Needed any uh, help with their patients. No only messing. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> so I've had I've been going for like because I've had this ringing in my ear. I keep going back. To, I've had four different appointments where yeah. You, if, you ever, if you ever get this, you ever need to go to the hospital. You go to the hospital, or you ever get a doctor's appointment. Yeah. You have the first, you have the first one. The like first before you get the appointment, I'm writing online exactly what's wrong. Yeah. 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 I'm bully. Yeah. Then you get to the appointment and the like. So what's going on with you? And you're like, do you not read any of the stuff I wrote? They're like... <laughs> and then yeah. they, refer, they refer you again. So you go back to another doctor. And then they've made notes, this other doctor. And then you come to the second one. And they stop. And then the doctor's like, what's, going, what's the matter with you? And I'm like, have you, not, have you not heard about everything that's going on? And he's like, <laughs> just tell me. Just, and I'm like, fuck yeah. yes. He's saying it third time and then again and then I went to another one in a uh, all these people looking in my ears with a little yeah. thingy plop it in my ear yeah. sometimes it's rough sometimes it's nice nice sometimes it's sweet sometimes they're sweet with me um, yeah. getting asked again and so I went yesterday nightmare there's no parking at the hospital I set off late because I assumed there'd be parking well I didn't set off late I set off with like I set off and I gave myself 15 minutes to find parking. Yeah, plenty of time. There's nothing. Oh. There's a guy filling his boot with baby stuff. So I'm thinking maybe he's leaving, like prams and that. Roll down my window. I'm like, excuse me, pal. And he turns around. And to tell me that he's not leaving, he does this. He goes, i got to feed the babies. i got to feed the babies. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. So what they t- what's the conclusion? Is there something up with your ears? More tests. I'm gonna. So I've got two more things. Gonna have two different more appointments. So we're. Yeah. So far we're four in. So. Yeah. What's the problem? You pain or can you not hear anything? Too many people talking shit in my ear. Apparently, everyone. Oh. Doing me head in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need one of those things that flushes out all the all the rubbish. Very satisfying to watch. You shouldn't be watching that. <laughs> but speaking about do- th- people that don't read the things, or you know, you have to explain something over and over again. In my new job, I'm trying to help with this uh, digitalisation. You know, using this new program for all the finances, and it's a bit tricky to use. So they've got a, a hotline. And you ring up the hotline and they go, right, uh, what's the problem? Tell us tell us what you can't do. And I'm like, well, we want to start using the finances, but uh, there's a load of like outstanding payments that aren't really outstanding payments. Can Is there any way to erase them all? Mm-hmm. And they're like, right, and um, have you tried doing this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've tried doing this. Have you tried doing that? Yeah, I've tried doing that. And they go, all right, then, if you could just write that all in an email to us and then someone will get back to you. I was like, where have I just been explaining it for five minutes? Can you not write it down? They're like, no, no, you have to write it in an email so we can understand. I was like, well, that's good. Mm. And they do that every time. So it's like, why, what's the put? Yeah. The world is crap. I wouldn't say that. That was just like one inconvenience. No, no, no. Nice things in the world like flowers and animals and some people. What country have they got that suicide pod in? Uh, I don't know about a suicide pod, but it's normally Switzerland, isn't it, where you can do things like that? I think Sweden might have started it as well, but there's one you can go to in the forest. Yeah. And um, there was... (laughs) There was a Switzerland, Sweden. It's something beginning with a swa. There's a this what? Right, where's this? I'm gonna look now. 
Why are you bringing this up? Because, um, yeah. oh my God, here we go. Mm. Oh what my God, do you accept cookies? Yeah, I accept cookies. Yeah. I'm about to commit euthanasia, I don't mind a cookie. Switzerland, right. Yeah. So, so there's a new suicide pod in the woods, where you go to the yeah. woods and you get in the pod. And uh, so this woman was the first to use it. And the creator of it, I think, has been arrested now. He's been put in custody. Right. Don't What's make the, that... What is it? Well, this is the issue, yeah? So yeah. after... Uh, so they've got and recovered a body and they've found right. strangulation marks on her neck. <laughs> so are they... Sorry, not to laugh at this situation, but... I'm imagining somebody going into this pod in a forest and about two minutes later, someone comes in. <laughs> so I didn't know it was going to be that. I didn't know it was going to be that. <laughs> it's the forest monster. Well, I, I, or they've clicked the pod and they've been like, you know, like an animal at the side of the road, like, and this guy's gone. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's lovely. Uh, yeah, don't know if I want to carry on this conversation. But I was thinking, this world's so cruel. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. He's kidding everybody, but I will have a genuine checkup with him after the pod. No, you won't, you lazy git. Yeah, lazy git. <laughs> Oof, a bit too lazy to. Check up on my friend's mental health. <laughs> Can't be asked with that today. Yeah, always lazy. check in on your friends. Um. Yeah, what else have I been up to? Uh, well, that's not something you've been up to. That's something you've seen or heard. <laughs> I've been watching telly. Unless that was, unless that was a confession. He's the one running into the Swiss forests. It's angry. But I hate, I went to the hospital and I hated the hospital, honestly. I said to myself yeah. when I was in it, if it wasn't late and if I knew where I was going, I wouldn't be in a mood and I wouldn't be hating it. Yeah. What did you not like about it? Well, I couldn't find anyone to park, so I was late, so I was running about. And then, bloody hell, they're like, with the NHS, they're like, use the app, use the app, get the app, the app, 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 use the app. I'm like, oh, I get the app. So I download the app and it's like, yeah. your appointment is at this time at this hospital. So I went and then I'm like, I get to the hospital, I was like, oh, what department? I thought it'd just be yeah. like, I thought ear, nose and throat would be like just somewhere you'd find on a map. Yeah. And then on the letter it says, no, on the app it says, it says on the letter we sent you where it is. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, well, you just put it on the app as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I'm running around and I'm hating everyone yeah. there. This hospital's under construction. Ah. Oh, These buildings. Making improvements. There's an old bloke, right? And he's got, gone up to a builder and he's gone, Excuse me, do you know where uh, there's a telephone I can use? And this builder's going, No, I don't. I don't work, like, like, I'm angry with him. <laughs> yeah, builder's like, yeah, 40 or something. And then the guy like, oh, turns around and starts to walk off slowly. Oh. There's a telephone on the wall. Yeah. Behind the builder. And he sees it and he goes, I mate, mate. Literally, no exaggeration. Screaming yeah. back at this guy's head. Yeah. I'm looking at this builder thinking, I wish you would drop dead right now. And I mean that. Maybe you should take a <laughs> trip to Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. And um, you're like, how about, it's an old man. He's definitely deaf in some capacity. Yeah. And this other building has, the builder has to restrain him. And he goes, that phone isn't working. It's like, oh. it's dead. Yeah. And, he's like, and you're like, when you talk to old people, right, you got to like, be slow with them. You gotta like, mm. you gotta give them time. You got. The thing is that their mind is like one of the first computers. It's got it's got no memory left in it. So yeah. many things have happened now yeah. with old people. The reds are just like, oh. yeah. 
Because 70 what? years ago, yeah. they wouldn't be alive. No. What a character arc you've had over the course of this podcast. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the understanding nature of Tom when he thinks about old people now. He understands them. He, I don't know if he respects them, but he's sympathetic to, to how they are. And I, I, I think that's brilliant. I'll respect you in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, like, well, I, I look forward to hearing more about the future appointments that you have. Well, there's old people like that who are like, you know, 80, who I don't care about because they're just like... Mm. <laughs> then there's people <laughs> in their 50s, 60s and 70s yeah. who do me head in. <laughs> Because they've still got too much energy and they're like yeah. getting in your face about stuff. Yeah. Lying. I don't understand that. It's bloody. I'm, there's this gig the other week and uh, yeah. after performance, someone's like, Can I have a photo? And I'm like, Yeah, yeah. So she gets her phone out and it's a dark room. So she keeps like taking pictures and it's crap. So I was like, Why don't you just turn the flash on? And I touch the flash on the phone. She's like, How did you know to do? How do you know about that? There are symbols that help you, Nana. You see the lightning. Well, lightning flashes, doesn't it? So that means she was like, she was like fifty, and then she went to me. She went to me. uh, She turned to me and she went. No, she's like fifty-four or something. Yeah. And she turned to me, and she went with a big cola bottle glass, glasses on she went he's single and I went no no not single and she went no I'm an asking like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and then I was saying to Lucy I was like oh, I thought she was when she said that initially I thought she was like saying, oh because my daughter over here do you know or I'm with my yeah. friends from work there's a yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like you know a, a younger girl and Luke this goes to me, you are where you're closer to this woman's age than you would be her daughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why, who have you got over there? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just me. We, we could have been at the same school. Oh. <laughs> could we? What? You're a teacher? Oh! <laughs> Creeps up on you. Yeah. She, well, this one was listening. This one was listening. She'd probably be like, I'm not fucking 50 odd. <laughs> <laughs> Great chance. Great chance she was like 40. Oh. 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 <laughs> Time does that to us. Um, hey, do you want to play this uh, German uh, Harry Potter Would You Rather game I've got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called Würdest du lieber which means uh, would you rather in German and so uh, <clears throat> there's a load of cards and you pick the cards at random and you just decide what you'd rather do so the first two are Würdest du lieber einen viel Saft trank mit Krabs Haaren trinken uh, would you like a cocktail? I'm not doing anything with crabs hard and tinkin, thank you very much. <laughs> this these are you must remember these are children, Lucas. And these no, no, it, it means would you like a cocktail with crab's hair in it? Or oh. auf einem Hippogreif durch die Luft leiten. Or ride a hippogriff in the sky. <laughs> ride a hippogriff in the sky. <laughs> I'd have gone for the same, if I'm honest. I thought, I thought they were going to be like, one nice, one nasty. Uh, no. All right, next one. Would you rather uh, nachts allein im verbotenen Wald spazieren gehen? Would you like to walk on your own in the forbidden forest? Or einen Centauren fragen, ob du auf ihm reiten darfst? Or would you ask your centaur if you can ride on him? Well, oh, that was an interesting one because Forbidden Forest, scary, spider's going to kill you. Yeah. Or have a telling off from a centaur because they don't like 
they don't like uh, being ridden on. Well, I am one to never disrespect someone, and I am known to be a very brave person, so I would walk alone in the Forbidden Forest. Very good. And uh, let's do one more. Would you rather eine Spielfigur beim Zauberschach sein? Would you like to be a wizard's chess piece? Mm-hmm. Or von Aragogs Verwandtschaft zum Essen eingeladen werden? Or would you like to be invited to Aragog's lair to for food? And that's in like, think you might get eaten then. Oh, do I want to be eaten? Do I want to be a chess piece or do I want to be eaten? I'll be the chess piece. <laughs> but they get battered about by swords, don't they? Because you could be killed doing that as well. Well, at least I'd be dead. You'd be dead if you were eaten as well. I don't want to be eaten alive. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, that was a bit of fun, and uh, we might play again if you if Tom enjoyed that. <laughs> that cost me bloody. How much did How much did I pay for that? Maybe you can take it, it back. Me, still, cost me like twelve euros. Oh, Oof. that's about ten quid in your money. Oh. Oof. Mm, any more updates? Hey. I've to do this morning, I've had some Werther's original popcorn. That was nice. Oh, you lucky git. I know. It sounds good, that, doesn't it? It was very it's, tasty. It's not even your birthday yet. I know. Well, I'll have Werther's original popcorn. It's uh, All Hallows Day. D- did you do anything for Halloween? Did you do Halloween anything for Halloween? Uh, mate, I went and gigged at Hot Water Comedy Club. Did it have a spooky theme? No, not really. Uh There were a few people wandering about in costumes last night. Someone had uh, made a spooky bush in their garden. They put like a face on a big bush. Huh! Uh, Apart from that, not much. I've built a cot this morning, so now the baby has somewhere to sleep. You're productive, you are. You what, sorry? You're productive. I am productive, getting shit done. I've, I've been sorting out my documents as well. I've got files now to put all the important documents like bills and uh, letters in. God, never ending, isn't it? Yeah, it's horrible. Well, it's... And we were just ending up with a big pile of shite, so I've sorted them all into uh, into years. I don't like it. <sighs> God, I don't know where my documents are. No, I don't. I don't I've know got... where my pa- I don't know where my passport is. Do you feel somewhere? Me? Yeah, I do actually. When did you last go abroad? <sighs> hmm. Is it Mallorca with me? Not Mallorca. Went... Lanzarote. I went. To, I think I went to Mallorca after that. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Mm. Globe trotter. Well, not really. Canary Spain. Trotter. Spain again. Spain. <laughs> Spain. Spain. Spain for me. Well, if you've got no more updates, I'll give you a chapter rundown. Would you like that? How long have we done? 24 minutes. I can give you more updates if you want. Oh, the threat of the rundown strikes again. <laughs> Go on, okay, man. What interesting stories have you been keeping from me? I had a bowl of porridge this morning. Oh! Bit of sugar on the top, was it? No, no, no. Chocolate and marshmallows. Oh, I forgot about your healthy porridge that you have. He has a bowl of porridge, and then he puts a bag of pick a mix on the top. You cheeky. Yeah, you are. Ooh, cola bottles, lips and tea. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Nice, healthy breakfast for me. Is, isn't he cruel to me, listeners? Isn't he cruel? Personal trainer's like, I don't understand. You, you've written out what you've been eating. And I just can't see why you're not shifting the weight. Well, that porridge, he's not told you what's on it. <laughs> he's got half a bag of Tang Fastics and a chocolate Santa. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? Some cold meat? I had. Oh, well, Martina made pumpkin pizza uh, yesterday. So I had some leftovers from that. It's very mm. good. 
Pumpkins, feta cheese, onion, bits of bacon, all on like a flatbread pizza. What sauce did you use? No sauce. You didn't use some sauce for dipping? No, just eat it as it is. The pumpkin and the cheese gives it moistness. Oh, God, I don't want you to ever say moistness down my ear all again. <laughs> Sorry, liquidity. Um, I went to London... Uh, and I got a. Uh, there's this thing called Seat Frog, where you can like bid for a first class ticket. Oh, it's always some word and an animal, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, have you downloaded Train Fox? Oh, yeah. What's, what's that? Go on, what's Seat Frog? You can bid for a first class ticket. That sounds awful. Can you think of any other ones? <laughs> uh, bus Bear. It's not one, is it? Oh, what, like real ones? <laughs> yeah. Funky Pigeon. Funky Pigeon. Moon Pig. Moon Pig. Porn uh, Hub. Oh, that's not one. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> moon Pig. Funky Pigeon. Having to be told, well, that's not one. It's not one. <laughs> <laughs> duck, duck, go. I could have honestly, I could have got booked myself a trip to Sweden after it because the reason you get first class... Switzerland. Switzerland. The reason you get first class <laughs> is for the food and drink and the service on the way down yeah. here. Yeah. There was no food and drink either way. Get on to like, we don't have any staff. And I'm like, go get some... Make sure you employ people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why am I just bid on frog ticket and I can't even get food or a drink? So I paid 35 extra quid to like sit in a better seat, which is nice because it's quiet and there's no one doing your head in there. Yeah. Normally you sit on the train and someone's sat in your seat or you get to sit next to someone. Or someone's like, you're sat and then someone's looking at you like this. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, and then they're like, but don't worry, don't worry, you will be entitled to a partial refund. Oh, that's good, a partial oh. refund. Can I have it now? No, 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 no. You get to do 20 minutes of admin for it. Oh, oh. I get to do 20 minutes of admin for my money back. How many pages is this document I have to fill out online? Eight. Oh. <laughs> That's oh. fun. That's fun for me, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And you have to supply photos of your receipts. Oh, oh that's good. So, that's can I? Do, will this for both my trips? Will this be one time, one bit of twenty minute admin? No, no. Two bits of twenty minute admin. Oh. Oh. Okay. Fill it all out on Survey Monkey. Can I charge an admin fee? No. Only businesses can charge an admin fee. Oh. Well, how about this for some business? It's my business. <laughs> <laughs> who about? Yeah, seat frog that. Band. Oh, is it a pun on leapfrog? <laughs> my ass. Mm. Mm. If you got a run down, I'd be happy to hear it. I have actually. I've got one here. Ooh. Have that run down. <laughs> you cannot it's... be throwing your poo at people, young man. I can. I live here. Oi. Chapter 18 Birthday Surprises. It's Ron's birthday. Hip, hip, hooray. And uh, it's still all a bit weird with Ron and Hermione. They're learning how to apparate from Wilkie Twycross. And uh, it's very difficult. The, nobody can do it. Susan Bones cut her leg off. Uh, mm -hmm. But apart from that, there's been no progress. Next minute, Ron has some jockeys and he falls in love with Ramil Devane. Turns out he's had one of her love chocks and uh, he gets all doolally. So Harry takes him to see Slughorn because he thinks, well, I could use this as an opportunity to find out about his sluggish memory from the last chapter and mm. Ron drinks some 
whiskey from Slugorn and then he collapses and that's the end of the chapter. You've had a few surprise surprise birthdays. Everyone's always giving throwing surprise birthday soirees for you. I've not had a surprise birthday party since I was twenty one. <laughs> and that's the only surprise birthday party I've ever had. Well, Martino tried to arrange a surprise birthday party, but you ruined it. I know, I did ruin it by well I'm going to blame Martina here because she kept pressuring me to think of something to birthday ideas for gifts. And then I was like, well, why don't we just go to a spa on my birthday? It's like, well, you can't do that. You've ruined it. Spa team. Well, I blame you for that. Well, I do. Trust you to try and blame a pregnant woman. You really are the lowest of the low. (laughs) Make you feel tough, does it? Yeah, it does. Make Martina's good, does. fucking fault. Martin, she's with child, right? Your child. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I, I see the error of my ways. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can only apologise to you, to the listeners, and of course to my wife, Martina. Mm. Harry we'll has been. This... Oh, go on. Harry's been set the task mm. of seducing Slughorn. He loves yeah. you, says Ron. Charm him. Oh, I yeah. loved how this chapter. How would you chapter. do that? How, how would you seduce Aris Slughorn? Let me tell you something, right? My whole life, I've never been able to get a single person to do what I want. Right. No one does what I want, right? Right. No one is interested. Anytime I've been gone to people, hey, I'm thinking of uh, going to this thing. Does anyone do this thing with me? People go, no, that's shit and your shit. I go, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I go, do you want to watch? Uh, do you want to go? I'm thinking about getting pizza. Do you want to get pizza? No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> people want to see in- this. Yeah. I- I people are more this- interested when I say, yeah. I'm going to do this. And I don't invite anyone, and mm. they go, Oh, I might like that if I'm not invited. So that's how you get people to do stuff. So I'd go to Slugorn. Do you know what I don't want to hear about? <laughs> Your obscured memories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to tell you now, Pea Green! Um, I would dress up as a Pea Green. What's that, love? I'd dress up like Pea Green, I'd have my curly hair. And I'd make myself small, and then I'd be like, you you got to tell P. Green, haven't you? And he'd be like, P. Green, Horcrux. Borrow me some information about the Horcruxes. Yeah. <laughs> but you'd use reverse psychology. Mm. Mm, I don't want to hear about that. Well, uh, maybe I should try that on you when I want you to do something. I might go, uh, hey, Tom, can you please not send these Patreon goodies to the following addresses? You got Let's it, boss. happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it works. <laughs> I'm sorry, mm. I still wouldn't do it. I'd go, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, boss. He's beyond tricking his Tom. He knows his mind and he can't be tricked into doing something he doesn't want to do. I've tried every which way. You can't wind my mum up. What's your mum got to do with anything? You see, you know, like, my dad is very easily manipulated. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'll go to my dad. I'll go to my dad. I'll go, do you know you're stupid? And he'll go, who? I'll go, you. And he'll go, I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> If I got my mum, do you know stupid? She goes, who? I go, you. She'd go, yeah, I am, yeah. (laughs) And so it stops being any fun. Whereas my dad would be like, you're stupid. I'll tell you, stupid. It's you. (laughs) That's a good way to deal with bullies. If they say something, you just go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's true. I remember you saying that. There There was a boy in your school who'd be like, I am weird, yes. And you said it didn't work. Do you remember him? Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, well, there was one who used to enjoy being a ping pong, not ping pong. He used to like being a pinball. And uh, he, <laughs> he was like, 
I think he thought it would stop him getting picked on. Because the whole idea of... <laughs> this is awful now. He'd stand in the middle of the circle and everyone would just push him to another person. And, we, and they called it the pinball game. And uh, I think he thought that would mean he'd stop getting uh, getting picked on. But you said there's one boy where people would go, <laughs> you're weird, you are. And he'd go, yes, I know I am. <laughs> I can't remember I who was, that is. I think that was from very early on in the podcast. Oh. But he, he was odd. He used, this guy used to eat glue. He would drink ink cartridges. And... Uh, if he saw a couple of like the older kids kissing, he would like jump on them. Oh, <laughs> mummy, daddy! <laughs> We're not your mum and dad. <laughs> and one one lad got annoyed that he did it. And <laughs> he lifted him up and just placed him on top of a hedge. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A very strange person. Maybe he's matured now. Maybe he's That's not eating glue anymore. That's a fun, unusual school, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a... I remember there was a girl in primary school who used to be very proud that her farts would smell like orange juice. It's just... Some people are odd, aren't they? Her farts smelt like orange juice? Yeah, she'd drink, or, she'd drink orange juice non-stop at school. And then she'd do a little trump. And then someone would be like, oh, that smells like orange juice. She'd be like, oh, that's because of me. And this was in Wales, was it? Yeah. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> Things that happen was in it, Wales. Was that that story you told me once where you and your classmates tied teachers to a chair and then you set her desk on fire and you all ran out of the room? No, that never happened. What? Well, that is horrific. <laughs> Who's done told that? that? You told that story once. I've never told that story. There was a listeners, teacher in our school who once got locked in a cupboard. Listeners, listeners, if you remember where Lucas and his friends tied a teacher to a chair and set her desk on fire and then they all ran out of the room. Because <laughs> <laughs> it happened. That did not happen. Once, to get out of a bit of work, we the teacher was late, so we wrote a note on the door of the class that said, Today we're in the computer room. Please go to A6, which was on the other side of the school. And then we stayed in the classroom and turned the lights off and hid under the desks. So when the teacher came in late, she'd read the sign on the door. And she'd be like, what? And you can hear again. And then she went all the way to the other side of the school to check if we were in the computer room. And then when she came back, we turned the lights on and cheered as if it was a <laughs> surprise birthday party. You we were like, hey, it. we got you, miss. And she was like, it's not funny. <laughs> oh, God. And then you tied yeah. her to the chair. No, we didn't <laughs> tie her to a chair. We didn't set the desk on fire. But the same, t- the poor teacher, uh, the same teacher from another year got, uh, she went into the supply cupboard and they locked her in. Was there any fire that day? There's never been a fire at my school as far as I know. There was a hoax bomb, I must have told you that story. About the bomb what scare. about that time, there was a summer holiday and you were playing out. You and a bunch of other kids, and there was a boy who, I don't know, I think he, he said he liked playing with matches, and as a prank, you all locked him in the barn. Like, there was a barn that he was in, and you were oh, like, oh, Donald's bullshit. in the... This has never happened. This happened! There was a boy in the <laughs> he barn. He does this to me. There was the story about me eating a carrot in the car with the green stuff coming off it, and I've there never done that. a boy in the barn, and... I've never been in a barn. He was playing in with matches park. in... In, you live in the country in Wales. This is your life. There's a boy in the barn and he started a fire and you'd all like barricaded the door shut and he's trying to get out. But you lot didn't realise that he'd lit a fire and so you're all now thinking... This is that funny... film you've watched. This is you're the film like... you told me about. <laughs> it's not. This it is. is your childhood. This is your childhood. And so he's banging, he's banging. 
And then, like, he tries to find somewhere else to escape, but, you know, of course, the barn just, like, goes up in flames and it collapses. You yeah. all run off realising what's happened. And you lay down in a wheat field and you say to yourselves, we weren't there, were we? And then another one's like, of course we were. And then you go, no, we won't. That's what we'll say, won't we? We weren't there. And then you and all your little pals went, yeah. No, we, we won't. There. That's what we say, won't we? We weren't there. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> well, you're a little boy, weren't you? He's talking rubbish. I've not got any stories about fire. I've got a story about a guy in the park who fell over and some dog poo went in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in his teeth. It was horrible. <laughs> but I've got no story about a kid being burnt in a barn and us pretending we weren't there. That's a film that you've watched. It's not... It is. Mm. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> did, did you ever... So they're making potions in this class. Did you ever make any potions when you were a kid? Like, I remember hanging around with these two in Spain. Katie and another Lewis. All my life I've had a friend called Lewis. And they're yeah. always a bad kid. This Katie and this Lewis. And they were making yeah. potions. They opened a fridge in Katie's house. And they were pouring all different liquids into a glass. Let's mark ketchup, vinegar, milk, yeah. Fanta. And they're mixing it together and they were going to drink it. And they both spat in it as well. Oh! Um, and they went to me, do you want to try it? And I went, no. And then, then both them two drank it. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I think I remember once like mixing all the drinks in the cupboard and having a drink of it. But I don't know if I called it a potion. But I wasn't spitting it. But... Uh, I remember girls at school would make perfume. And they'd be like, oh, we've made perfume. I'd be like, what is it? Uh, water and a dandelion. I'd be like, oh, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> Give me a spritz of that. Well, you have to just, we have to just pour it on you. Don't, we don't have the spritzing option. It's just a bottle. <laughs> oh, that's oh. lovely. Oh, it's in my eyes. It's non-toxic, I, <laughs> I, I assume. Oh. <laughs> Has this been tested? Um, nope. You has. <laughs> been tested on you, an animal. Ooh! <laughs> no. I used to fall on my head a lot as a child. I've got various bald spots. One from being jumped on by a Great Dane puppy and bashing my head on the curb. Once somebody did a wrestling move on me and I landed on a shard of glass. Uh, fell down some stairs. Oh, what's happened to me with my head? That's why it's a bit lumpy. I've always said you've got a lumpy head. And um, Do you yeah. suspect there might be any memory loss from these brain injuries you've had? <laughs> I don't know if it was a brain injury, but my, my memory of like childhood is very limited. I can exactly. remember things happening, but so, I don't remember being there or so the, what it was the story like. Of, the story of telling, uh, I told you, that you told me about telling the teacher to the chair, that happened. No. You just forgot, you just forgot about it. This is how he takes advantage of me, listeners. He gaslights me. I've had apologies from some of the patrons because last week you told me that I was not reading out the comments and then responding to them. And then Listen all the patrons here. agreed. And then later on they were like, oh yeah, sorry, you were reading them. Because they re-listened to it and I cut out all the f 10 minutes of you going, yes, <laughs> that's good. Repl and I was like, well, there's no point <laughs> leaving that in because it'll put people yeah. off listening. They'll think the old episodes are like that. And so I cut, because I cut that out, everyone was like, oh, he wasn't doing it that much. Why did we think he was? Because you were. Oh, He's gaslighting everybody now, even our Patreon listeners, with his editing tricks. <laughs> editing tricks? You ain't the truth, you do. Hmm. Maybe I do. The truth of war and famine. Horrible. <coughs> Susan Bones' anyway. his leg fell off. <laughs> right. Susan Bones. No, we've not got to that bit yet. I think it's time for an intervention between Ron and Hermione. I think if two people are so obviously in love, you've just got to put them in a room together, lock the door, and let them talk the problems through. 
until they either decide that they love each other and go out with each other, or they decide that they're not going to love each other but be pleasant to each other. You're out of your mind. You can't... What? You see, it goes back to what he's like as a child. You can't solve all your problems by keeping someone prisoner. <laughs> We'll lock them in a room. No, 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 we're not locking people in rooms. You better come out in love or we'll set the room on fire. No, Lucas. <laughs> we cherish our friends. Yeah. Mm. Well, what would you suggest then? Because it can't keep going on like this. Harry's a poor gooseberry between two prickly thorns. Uh, I don't know. Um, separate them, put them in different houses. Maybe... Ron needs to go in a year below. Hermione should go in the year above. You think about it? Mm. Well, let's imagine, for argument's sake, that two of your friends were in love. Let's say Lewis and Holly, for example. Mm. But they aren't admitting it to each other and they keep arguing and it's all a bit awkward. Would you intervene or would you just let nature run its course? Not of our business. Oh, but you've been a trio for six years and now... You've got a weird relationship with them both. Because you don't want to <laughs> not, upset either of them. None of my business. What you got to remember is, your business is your business. Other people's business is their business. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not Perez Hilton. I'm not running a gossip blog online. Is it not pronounced Paris Hilton? Oh, you naive man. There's a gossip <laughs> blog that's been running for years called Perez yeah. Hilton, yeah? Right, yeah. And it's run by a man, I think his actual name's Mario. Maybe it's not, I might be thinking of someone else. But he <laughs> just talks about, all he does yeah. is gossip about celebrities, yeah? And when he first started off, he'd draw photos on them. He'd draw coke round their nose with, like, you know, on whatever paint app he had. And he'd draw yeah. other white bits all over their face as well to make it look undesirable. Ooh. That's, Sue, you're, that's like, what you're trying to make this podcast, trying to force, pressure people into doing stuff. I'm not. I'm nothing like Paris Hilton. Perez, it's a man. Oh, well, same thing. I'm not trying to be him either. Hmm. That sounds awful, a gossip blog. Rumour mongering. It's not good for you. If you don't know the facts, don't talk about it. All right? All right. Well, I'd intervene, you wouldn't. But it's getting on my nerves, this Ron and Hermione thing. And later yeah. on, I thought it was finally coming to a head. And Harry did as well, that Ron would finally admit that he loved her. It turns out he was just uh, in, bewitched by Ramilda Devane's chockies. The wicked witch. Wicked <laughs> witch. I've been bewitched by a wicked witch. <laughs> <laughs> They're in potions, right? And the theme of the lesson is Golpalot's third law. Right? And Golpalot's third law basically says that a mix of antidotes needs to be bigger than the individual antidotes together. Harry can't mm. understand it. He says Harry couldn't get his head around it. You're thick as shit. <laughs> you can't, a mix of antidotes can't just be the three ingredients mixed together. There has to be more to it than that. And if I don't understand this A-level potions... I don't get it. <laughs> I'm too stupid. So Harry uh, ran to the cupboard and he pulled out a marzipan date and showed that to Slughorn. <laughs> Tablet. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bit like being in medical school and I'm like, right, this patient's got all these three wrong. He's got head injury, he's got broken arm, he's got internal bleeding. I know what, Professor? Paracetamol! <laughs> yeah! Oh! <laughs> well, I don't think you should be throwing your shit around. But not thinking about the pain anymore, though, are you, sir? <laughs> oh, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's Somebody. what they should do. Your doctor's appointment with your ear. 
I'm not thinking about the pain anymore, are you, sir? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not thinking about the internal bleeding now you're covered in shit, are you? <laughs> It's a beezer. Hmm. And they're giving more, not to spoil it, but the half blood prince is Snape. And they're giving more hints that it's him because he's like, uh, he reads about the beezer in the half blood prince's book. It's like a beezer would cure anything. I remember Snape saying that. And at that point, I think. Clever listener would be like, oh, maybe the half blood prince is Snape. I was thinking he does listen. Yeah, that's very good to remember that from lesson one. Because <laughs> I don't think I remember anything anyone said in any lesson. Well, he, you just learn the material, he, don't you? He was trying to be a good student in Snape's potions. Because remember, like, he's yeah. in the first lesson and he's writing down everything that Snape says. Yeah. And then. Snape's like, you must pay attention. And he's like, oh, I was paying attention. I was paying so much attention. I was recording everything you said. You, yeah. <laughs> Read that. That's what you've just said. I'd be like that if I was in Harry Potter school. What, writing everything down? No, I'd be, I'd be like, you may not pay attention. Not be paying attention. Fucking read that. Read it. <laughs> No one gets expelled. They're always threatening expulsion, aren't they? Bring in Filch. Let's chain him up by his ankles. I've got a wand. You've got fuck all. A bad cadaver, Filch. Dead. It's done now. It's done. No more creepy man trying to attack yeah. students in the school. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hang him by the hooks. Well, what about kneecap your leg? <laughs> I don't know why people are scared of him. I don't know why people are scared of him. <laughs> Defend yourself. What's his cat called? Mrs. Miggins? Mrs. Norris. Mrs. Oh, Norris. Why do you not know anything about... You called Hogwarts Harry <laughs> Potter School. Now you call him Mrs. Norris, Mrs. Miggins. Hmm. And then old man Withers and Mog, the caretaker. Really <laughs> <laughs> He's Harry Potter School. <laughs> they take a ride on the Harry Potter train. And then they get to Harry Potter school and they learn all the Harry Potter spells. It is Harry Potter school. That's all anyone talks about there. <laughs> it's the Harry Potter school. Oh, no. I can't believe this. I've written a note and you're going to... It's going to prove that you're right about what you've been gaslighting me about. What? <sighs> Because I'm on about, because uh, Harry's got to try and get Slughorn to tell him about this memory. And I've put here, just tie him to a chair and force feed him very to serum. That's weird, isn't it? Tying a teacher to a chair's going <laughs> twice today. Freaky. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? This is about the Dark Lord here. You can't be going pussyfooting around trying to give him sweeties and make him feel nice so that he tells you. The, the future of the wizarding race is on the line. Hold his nose and shove some truth serum down his gob and ask him. Bloody hell. It's, it's book six now. I can't be pissing about. You militant you are, bloody. Yeah. He craves a dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of going on holiday to North Korea. Mm. See me met. <laughs> See me met. <laughs> Kim Jong Un. <laughs> well, don't know anyone else from there. <laughs> See me met. <laughs> Thinking you mates with Kim Jong Un. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Kim Jong Un. <laughs> See me met. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I know any other Koreans do you? not North Korea well they don't really have a celebrity um, well there's, he's got his brother who's like likes to go to Disney World and stuff who didn't want to <laughs> well, why is that a known fact? 
Kim Jong Un brother Disney. Kim Jong Un brother Disney. <laughs> Kim Jong Nam. Kim Jong Nam. Yeah. I think he was assassinated. Um, let me just find out how he died. Assassin- yeah, assassination. Uh, he was uh, exposed to VX nerve agent at Kuala Lumpur Airport in Malaysia. It's widely believed he was killed on orders of his brother, half brother Kim Jong Un. Four North Korean suspects left the airport shortly after the attack, travelling back to uh, Nanyang. I think that's Nanyang. Um, oh, but thank God he got to go on It's a Small World before that happened. Kim Jong Nam was arrested in Japan on arrival at Narita International Airport, accompanied by two women and a four year old boy identified as his son. He was travelling on a forged Dominican Republic passport using a Chinese alias, Pang Zhong. After being detained, right. he was deported to China, where he said to have travelled to Japan to visit Tokyo Disneyland. The incident caused his father to cancel a planned visit to China due to the embarrassment it caused him. Well, because you've done that, I'm not going to China now. <laughs> Yes, yeah, embarrassing. There's nothing embarrassing about me going to a theme park. You've got a goofy hat on. It's, you're supposed to be Kim Jong's nan. Or his, or his brother. Poor git. Oh! Bloody hell. That's like... Uh, that's like Harry and Meghan getting assassinated for going to Alton Towers. But he'd already been to Disneyland because his dad, <laughs> Kim Jong Il, took him to Disneyland. Yeah. So it's not his fault. He's just got a taste for it. He has to keep going. Yeah. <clears throat> it's all very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Susan Bones' his leg fell off. Yeah. Bit of magic fun at last. Subo's leg has fallen off. That would make my mind turn to mush. Yeah. It's very scary, isn't it? Imagine seeing your leg on the other side of the room. Yeah. That'd sh- yeah. Fuck it. That'd freak me out, man. I think they should make it more realistic. I feel like if something happens like that, this splitting thing where your body splits in half, you should be dead. How are you still, like, surviving that? They need to make apparition a bit more dangerous, I think. Death mm. of Susan Bones in this chapter, please. Oh! Subo dead. <laughs> um, Ron, I've written Rob here, so I'm going to have to go with that. Rob has eaten a love potion. <laughs> Hiya, Rob. Ron! I told you, you don't know what he's doing. Harry Potter school. <laughs> Helen and Rob. <laughs> Harry Potter's friends. It's a lot to remember. It's a lot yeah, to remember. Is. Yeah. So well, it's not as if you've been reading these books for four years. <laughs> hey you. <clears throat> Up yours. <laughs> oh. So let me tell you this, right? So yeah. Ron's eating love potion, and now he's going on about this other girl, yeah, and then... Yeah. Blah, 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 they got to go to Slug on, and uh, Harry's going, as long as we can get him to drink enough mead, he'll uh, he'll tell us all about this forgotten memory. So that's your plan, is it? You're going to get yeah. him drunk? What are you <laughs> thinking, boy? I know. And that's a teacher coming up with that. Hmm, well... You're the potions teacher. You've got all the information about antidotes and poisons. What do you suggest? We'll get pea green pissed. (laughs) Thank you, Professor. Yeah. But it's dodgy, isn't it? Maybe someone was trying to kill Slughorn by poisoning the mead. Because Ron's Mm. ended up collapsing nearly dead. And then... He's trying to make Slughorn get drunk and he's forcing things into Ron's mouth. Yeah. The That little tablet he had earlier, not as you, you know what, but 
still let people do what they want. Yeah, and for all they know, Ramil Devane might could have been a, his wife, a good wife. They might have stopped all that. Well, she wasn't interested in Ron, so... Oh, fair enough. They're interested in what Malfoy is up to because he keeps uh, disappearing. And it really made me laugh because they open up the Marauders map to see where Malfoy is. Mm-hmm. And it says, after a minute or so, Ron saw him in the Slytherin common room. It took them a minute to look in the Slytherin <laughs> common room. That's the first place I'd try and find Malfoy. Hmm, where could Malfoy be? Let's see, let's have a look at the kitchens. Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where is Malfoy? Where, oh, where, oh, where is Malfoy? Where, oh, where, oh, where is Malfoy? How about on the roof? <laughs> How about on the roof? <laughs> He's in the what, Slytherin common room. Do you remember what that song was from? Da, 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 da. No. Bear in the Big Blue House. Ah, that old oh, classic. Where, oh, where, oh, where is Shadow? Where, where, where is Shadow? And then the shadow comes out and she's like, Hello, Bear! <laughs> <laughs> where, da, 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 who knows? Anyway, Ron's collapsed. Good mm. cliffhanger, I think. Could be dead. Mm. Uh, that's all I've written down that you'd want to hear, probably. Right. How many teachers tied to a chair are you going to give this chapter out of five? I really enjoyed this chapter. I like the apparition lessons. That I feel like it's been a while since we've had like a fun bit of magic. Like back in the olden days. So the apparition was a bit of fun. Subo's leg coming off. Ron's birthday. The funny bit about him being in love. And also trying to get this stuff out of, uh, out of Sluggor. I thought it was great fun. I'm going to give it five teachers strapped to a chair out of five. That's lovely. I agree with you. A lot happened. A lot of crazy things happened this week at Harry Potter School. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. For that, I give it five teachers out of five. Full house! Are you ready for this week's enchanting episode of Quiz? Yes. Um, welcome to the big quiz. Do, 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 do. Hello from the small quiz. Questions here, answers there. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the Harry Potter quiz. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Harry Potter quiz. Here's the questions. Come on in. So let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new favourite quiz theme, actually. Keep it in. Send a <laughs> private message to Tom if you like that, because I did. I need a hundred private messages to keep that. You've heard him. Ponavision Army, go! Actually, email Lucas's boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send him a quick email. And if he relays it back to me, it stays in. Right, question one. Yeah. What what is a bezoar? It's a stone from the stomach of a goat. Correct. Question two. What are the three D's? Determination, deliberation, and destination. Is deliberation one? Yes. Okay. Question three. <laughs> yeah. Who did Harry gape at? <laughs> Who did Harry gape at? Ron. Ron. Question four. Whose love potion was it? Ramilda Vane's. You doing? I can't give you that. It's Ramilda Vane. I just said it's Ramilda Vane's, as in her apostrophe S potion. 
Oh, I thought you thought her name was Veins. No. Whew. Close. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Question five. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're a little boy... Oh, no! And a bunch of other children locked a boy in a barn and you... And... <laughs> As it set ablaze, you held the door shut. True or false? What a position to put me in. Because I know the answer. The listeners know the answer. But I, that's not the answer Tom wants to hear. But also, I feel like he would trick me into saying that I did it and then tell me that that was wrong because, of course, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh... Well, I've got, I know the quiz is on the line, but I've got to be true to myself. That is false. Lucas, you did do that. You've oh! just forgotten because you're insane. Oh, no. Oh, I've lost the quiz. Unfortunately, that was this episode of Quiz. Um, right, more, so more this... emails, please. <laughs> complain, complain, complain. I did really well there to remember what a Bezo was. To remember what the three Ds were, added well. So this was really fun. We hoped you liked it too. Well, Seemed I didn't. like we'd just begun, but Lucas failed the quiz. <laughs> clever boy, <laughs> clever boy, but not That's it. today. He only oh. tried so hard. If only he'd not lied and remembered that story right, he'd be walking away with. A new trophy. A new, new trophy. trophy. Goodbye, Bear. <laughs> well, that was a good quiz. Now it's time for my favourite segment because it's justice filled. It's Edward's droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to <coughs> ploppings. We mean the messages you send in when we allude to Hedwig's droppings. Cheap, cheap. Now, this week we've had a couple of nice reviews one review is uh, from somebody anonymous and this person says the cure for boredom it was a dark rainy winter evening and i was sitting in my room bored to death i'd grown tired of the same depressing news and finance podcasts and needed something to stimulate my sleeping brain cells after several long minutes of searching through available podcasts, I came across one that intrigued me, the Pottervision podcast. Feeling drawn to it by some strange supernatural force, I took a chance on it and played the first episode. Then another, then another. I couldn't believe my ears. Hagrid's pumpkins, Little Miss Naughty Knickers, and a man saying yeah, yeah, repeatedly. This podcast had everything I was looking for. It was the answer to my boredom. Nearly 150 episodes later, and I've learnt more about the Harry Potter books and Tom's Damp problem than I ever thought I wanted to. I can give it no fewer than five men writing a review that is far too long out of five. A masterpiece. Thank you very much. That's very nice. What a lovely written review. Thank you very much, anonymous person. Uh, someone has put five stars. This podcast robbed me. I was on an iTunes free trial for a while, but I've had to buy the whole thing just because of this bloody podcast. Undo that subscription, get on YouTube, Spotify. It's everywhere for free. It's on Apple Podcasts for free. Yeah, no need to do... This is like the person who bought an iPad just to listen to the podcast. You don't need... It's free! <laughs> These episodes are free to listen and to watch. <laughs> oh, great. I just could bought an Apple Watch so I could listen to the podcast. Didn't, you didn't need to do that. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, that person's called Pee Pee on Me. Okay. Oh, great. I've just signed up to an OnlyFans because the bloody pot of vision pot. No, you didn't need to do that. I'm not even on there. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that of your own accord, have I? Have I? <laughs> Naughty. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's all for free. And uh, well, all you have to do is listen to a couple of adverts now. And that, uh, 
that's payment enough for us. Now we've got a have load we, of payments. Have you been told how much we've got for that yet? Uh, I'll talk to you about that later. I do have an update on that front. Sounds low. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you about it later. Sounds, Not in front of the children. Sounds pointless. Um... Now, we've got a load of new patrons, too many to count. And the first one is George, who's a baby Harry. Hello, George. Right, one moment. Um, one moment, please. George, who's a baby Harry. Um, right, you ready, George? You are a baby walking down the road. Uh, you stumble across a boy who's flicking a silver quarter. You walk up. What's this? Heads or tails, the boy says. I'm just a baby. He says, yes, but you're old enough to do heads or tails. You say, right. (laughs) I'm game. Tails. The boy flicks the coin into the air. Um, You say at this point, what were we flipping for? The boy says, whether or not I'm going to throw you. Oh! The uh, coin lands. He slaps it onto his back of his hand. Mm. Heads. <gasps> the boy reaches down for your legs, about to launch you into the air. Unfortunately, there's a man there for the boy. That man is me. <laughs> I've got a big fist, <laughs> and I punch him right in the face. <clears throat> The boy flies backwards. Whoa, 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 whoa. Into traffic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. whoa. Cars narrowly avoiding it. Get out the road, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he lands in a dustbin. And then you think, oh, that's funny. And everyone cheers. <laughs> but then the bin men come and throw him in the back of into a bin truck. And he gets crushed. Don't throw a baby. Welcome. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> welcome, George. We've got another baby Harry to welcome, and it's Lewis Cooper. Lewis Cooper, you are wandering round a cemetery at night. Whoa. Oh. 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 Looking at the graves, some covered in moss, you know. Some knocked over, some stolen from their marble. Who's done that? Um, all of a sudden, you see a shape. <gasps> Scary. Your heart starts pumping. Pum, 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 pum. The shape goes forward to you. Who are you? You ask the shape. I am the spirit of the cemetery. Oh. So that's a bit confusing. There's a, a lot of people here. Uh, <laughs> one spirit <laughs> how can you be the spirit of the cemetery and he says I just am everyone else went onto the afterlife it's a small cemetery you said fair enough what do you want with me you asked the spirit the spirit says nothing <laughs> 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 you obviously want something go on name your price price for what I'm just bumped into you you st- the spirit scares you a bit and you fall backwards into a grave. The spirit's looking down at you. You've done this to me. The spirit says, I haven't. All of a sudden, we're accosted by the grave digger. Why? What are you not doing in here? I've got the graves to dig. The spirit pushed me down. I don't see no spirit. There aren't no spirits in here, only bodies. Are you going to bury me alive? I'm a baby patron. Oh, that's a good idea. Up into this freshly dug grave I've made just for you. What strange grave digger the spirit thinks to itself. The spirit um, <laughs> picks up a shovel and slices off the grave digger's head. Yeah. Oh, didn't know you were going to do that. The grave digger falls to his knees and dies and falls in the grave. You climb up his body and you shake oh. hands with the spirit and you say, we will never fight again. The spirit says, what is going on with you? I've not fought with you 
Lawrence. <laughs> Welcome, Lewis. Welcome, Lewis! Now, the next person to welcome is another baby Harry, and it's Abby Crew. Abby, you are walking around a Curry's PC world. Yeah, your parents are looking <laughs> at computers. You'll think, oh, I don't really care for that. You go and stumble into the home appliances, looking at all, playing with the ovens. <laughs> oh, fun. You find a refrigerator, and you think, this is great. You start climbing up all the shelves. But unfortunately, it locks with you inside. <gasps> they uh, wrap it up and they ship it out. They're sending it to someone's house who's just bought this refrigerator. It arrives and then the man opens the door. Hello, have you got my fridge? Yeah, it's here. A tip would be nice. Oh! I didn't think you did that. I thought I've paid an extra £25 for delivery. Yeah, and I've just pulled my back bringing it up your drive, you silly cow. Gravel? You didn't think about that, did you? Hurt, that did. Come on. I must be honest. I, you're right. I didn't think about gravel. OK, here you go. Here's £5. <laughs> that should sort you back out. <clears throat> the old lady unwraps the fridge and the baby oh, falls out. Next time I... Next time I order, I will think about gravel. Oh, there's a baby in here. What do you want with me, the baby says. I don't want anything with you. I just wanted a fridge. Then why did you just pay a man to capture me and bring me to this house? Why, well, I didn't. He wanted a tip after the gravel. Do you think I believe that? I don't know. The ba baby looks to the floor and sees a bit of gravel from the man's shoes. She picks up two pieces. Lift your glasses up, please, Nana. Oh, okay. Yeah! Oh! Oh! There's about three pieces in each eye. Oh. Did you expect me to do that? No, I didn't expect you to do that. You've got one of my cataracts. Right. You flee the scene and you catch a bus back to PC World. You are safe. Welcome, Mabby Crew! Our next patron to welcome is Ruth Patchett. Ruth, you've walked into a Subway Sandwiches. <laughs> That's such a nana's way of describing it. Oh, I went to a Subway Sandwiches yesterday and got myself a Subway Sandwich. Ruth, you've walked into Subway Sandwiches. <laughs> You're the only one in there and you thought, why not? I'm a little baby. You go up to the counter and you try and order, but the, for some reason the person behind the counter is being very rude to you and won't serve you. You're not getting served. Go next door to McDonald's Burgers and get something from there. <laughs> I'm a baby. I'm a human being, and I can talk. You must serve me. I have legal tender. I, I demand service. All right, what bread then? Hearty Italian. Hearty Italian, foot long or six inch? Uh, foot long. What are you having in it? Do I have to ask all the questions? Turkey breast and ham. Turkey to and ham. Cheese <laughs> and toasted. Cheese and toasted. Cheese and toasted. I was about to ask that. Cheese and toasted. The man, right. opens, the man opens up the oven to put the sandwich in. And you think, do you yeah. know what? How about a bit of revenge? You run behind the man and you push him into that tiny little oven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wanted oh. cheese as well. And you slam the door shut. Yeah, the man is now in the oven. He's got thirty seconds in there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I oh, might as well have a bit of this sandwich while I wait. You greedy git! Are you crisping up yourself? Yeah. Oof. Are you dying? Yeah, dying in here. Yeah. Oh. Man comes into the subway sandwiches and he looks at what's happening and he goes, What's happening here? How weird. Come on, baby, there's no place for a baby. And he takes you away to McDonald's Burgers. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Ruth. We've got another baby Harry to welcome and it's KLSR. KSI. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that YouTuber? <laughs> KSLR, okay. Hello, yeah. KSLR. You're on the playground, uh, 
la 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 there's a, a, a bigger boy there with a bag of sweeties and he won't share. He's teasing everyone. No one can have my lovely starburst. I would like one, says KSLR. Well, you're not having one, are you? <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Come no. on, we'll do a swap, sees. Well, what have you got for me, then? Do you like, uh, do you like rock? Rock? Rock. No, I don't want rock. What else you got for me? You don't want rock? No, I don't want rock. Oh, rock. I thought you did rot. Rock? Yeah, I'll have a bit of rock, like a bit of Blackpool rock, you mean? You'll have a bit of rock, right? Here's your rock. The bait KSLR grabs a rock from the floor and smashes the bigger kid's head in. <laughs> oh, rock is the Sweet, quick. Sweeties for everyone. Sweeties are for everyone. Everyone runs screaming away from the scene. What a horrific display. KSLR, you are left isolated. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Welcome. Hey, thank you, KLSR. KLSR. Yeah, I said it right. Now we've got another baby, Harry, and it's Callum W. Callum W. Callum, there is a baby rolling contest down a hill in Wales. All the finest, roundest babies are going to roll down the hill... Biggest, roundest one who gets to the bottom first wins a prize. You're up there thinking, I've got a great chance at winning this. I'm quite a round baby. But unfortunately, there's another round baby next to you. Goo goo ga ga. Do you think you're going to beat me? Yes, I'm the roundest baby in all of Britain. Do you want a bit of rock? <laughs> no, I saw a trick. Somebody did that and came to someone's head in. I don't want rock. <laughs> You're a clever baby, aren't you? Yeah, I'm round and clever. Do you think your mum wants some rock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pick up a rock and throw it at this big baby's mum. Yeah! <laughs> it's uh, in the guts and the baby runs. My mummy, my mummy, runs after it. Go on, baby. I knew you were going to do that, <laughs> mummy. You, Callum, you roll down the hill and you win the contest. Hooray! Mwah, 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 mwah. Well done, Callum. Should we do one more? Uh, yeah. Uh, we've got a new baby, Harry, and it's a man whose surname sounds like a boppet instruction. It's Rory Turnit. Rory Turnip. Turnit. <laughs> you are a baby who is, um, uh, your ship has capsized and you have floated along to a desert island. Oh my god, you crawl ashore, kissing the sand. Oh no, I'm completely alone, I'm completely alone. Oh, I'm not completely alone. There's another castaway here who looks like he's been here for a number of years. Well, top of the burger to you. I've been <laughs> waiting for a company for over five years. Oh, yeah? What, um, what, uh, what attempts at rescue have you made? Well, I've tried making a few of those smoke signals, but nobody seems to know what I'm doing. This man has got no plan or ambition whatsoever, you say to yourself, Rory. Um, would you like a bit of rock? Oh, I hate love a bit of rock. Yes, please. That would be grand. Rory, you grab the nearest rock and you cave this man's head. <laughs> Top of the oh. burger, that don't fucking mean anything, you mad bastard. Welcome aboard. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to do that. <laughs> so thank you to all our babies. And if you're in the queue, we'll be there with you soon, OK? You've just got to be patient with us, please. That was Hedwig's Droppings. This has been the Potter Vision Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. As always, get yourself on the Patreon. There's bonus episodes. All right. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big load of laughs over there. We might be having a Christmas party soon. Should we have a Christmas party? 
When's your baby due? 17th. Well, when do you want to have the Christmas party? Start of December. All right, in a month. Yeah. So you want to you have a month off, but you want me to record a load of extra episodes. I could probably record double vision ones. It's like... Yeah. That's a lot of extra episodes I'd have to record. I don't think I could do it. What about... what if we, Do you want to have a guest host each week while you're gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can if you want. For a few weeks. Get Lewis on. That's a lot of organising for you, though. <laughs> we'll have it a is think. A, I got it, mate. Yeah, we'll let listeners... They can decide. No podcast yeah. or guest pod, guest host. What we'll do, we'll, well, why don't we... We'll make double visions that you'll be on. Yeah. Is that the... Or, or should we do it vice versa? Do normal episodes that I'm on and then double vision bonus. We'll let you vote. What do you yeah. want? Do you want me to have an holiday? <laughs> or... Oh. Do you want me to make bonus episodes? Well, no, no. Well, I don't think we... So it'd have to be break or <laughs> no podcast or some of them have guest hosts. Or some of them have guest hosts. What do you want? Don't let the vote be too overwhelming in the favour of guest hosts. <laughs> that would hurt me feelings. But anyway, next time, whenever that may be, It'll be chapter 19 of book 6, episode 154, Elf Tales. You have been a liar, Tom Lawrenson, about my childhood past. And you've been an old git, Lucas Kirkby. Goodbye. Do you want a bit of rock? <laughs>